in this question we are told that waves on a spring are produced at the rate of 20 wavelengths every 5 seconds. In part A, we are required to find the frequency of the wave motion. In part B, we are told that if the wavelength of the waves is 0.01 meters, we are required to find the speed of the waves. And in part C, we are required to find the period of the waves. So let's go straight to part 1. Now in this question, we are given that the spring produces 20 wavelengths every 5 seconds. In order to find the frequency, we need to remember that frequency is actually the number of vibrations or oscillations or wavelengths made per unit time. So in this case, it is the number of wavelengths. We can write it as the number of wavelengths because a complete wavelength is a cycle. So we can say it is the number of wavelengths or oscillations divided by the time taken to make those oscillations. So remember that a complete wavelength is an oscillation. If we are given a wave like that, a wavelength starts from this point all the way to that point. So you can see that this one is a complete cycle. It's a complete oscillation. So if they tell us that the wave makes 20 wavelengths, it is like telling us that the spring makes 20 oscillations every 5 seconds. So we are going to divide the number of wavelengths, which is 20, divide by 5, and here we are going to get 4 wavelengths per second, or 4 oscillations per second, or better still, 4 has. That is the frequency of this wave. Now let's go to part B. So in part A, we have just seen that the frequency is 4 Hz. Now in this part, we are actually told that the wavelength of the waves is 0 0.01 meters. So this is wavelength, lambda. Remember wavelength is symbolized using this Greek alphabet, which we call lambda. We are required to find the speed, V, of the waves. At this point, we can recall the relationship between speed, lambda, and frequency. And that equation states that speed is going to be equal to frequency times wavelength. The frequency is 4. The wavelength is 0 0.01 meters. And this, of course, gives us 0 0.04 meters per second. And this is the speed of the waves. It is just as simple as that. Now let's go to part C. So we have just seen that the speed of the waves is 0 0.04 meters per second. We had calculated the frequency of the waves as 4 has. Now we are required to calculate periodic time. And we just recall that periodic time is related to frequency by this relationship. So periodic time is, is equal to the inverse of the frequency or 1 over 4. And that gives us 0 0.2 five seconds and that question is just as simple as that now what do we do you need to remember here you need to remember that if you are given a certain number of happenings a certain number of oscillations or vibrations in a given time you can use that relationship you can use the fact that frequency is equals to the number of of happenings, the number of vibrations or the number of oscillations divided by time to give you the frequency. 
So in these questions, when you're given this kind of information, the examiner is simply giving you a way of calculating the frequency. That is what you note from this question. The other one is the relationship between frequency, speed, and wavelength. And speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. And lastly, of course, is this relationship between periodic time and frequency. Now, if we are given that periodic time is equal to 1 over f, it can be shown that f is also equal to 1 over periodic time because you just need to bring frequency here and periodic time comes here. Now, let's stop this question at this point and look at the next example.